Good evening and welcome to our first special G20 edition of QT News, the global summit that will showcase Brisbane to the world. Today more world leaders and their delegations, along with the international media covering the summit, arrived in the River City. A trickle that will speed up even more tomorrow. The overarching goal of this year's G20 is a commitment by world leaders to collectively boost global economic growth by 2% over the next five years. And over the next few days, we'll be reporting on how they plan to achieve that. Tonight, Brisbane is in full G20 security lockdown. Thousands of police are patrolling the streets, many public transport routes have been suspended and summit venues and city hotels are barricaded off. There was no ignoring the arrival of the United States. This presidential helicopter flew over Brisbane yesterday in preparation for Barack Obama's arrival expected early on Saturday. It was one of three helicopters spotted flying over the city. These military Osprey practiced takeoff and landing in a football field at Hurston. It was one more sign security operations ahead of this weekend's G20 summit are in full swing. The Australian Defence Force has arrived from Canberra, already soaring through Brisbane skies. New Zealand and interstate police have been flown in as part of the increased security commitment. You are here to participate in one of the largest peacetime security operations Australia has ever seen. Hotels where dignitaries are staying are sectioned off, roads are closed and barricades have been installed. Throughout South Brisbane, the police presence is palpable. Officers on the ground are patrolling the streets in a show of strength. The largest numbers are at South Bank, where the International Leaders' Summit will take place. Police have been given additional powers to use in case of emergency and have stricter controls within the G20 red zone. I think it's tight enough. I don't think people can get access to the places that they ought not be. So I don't think there needs to be anything more and there's probably layers of security that we're not aware of. Protests are likely to increase in the lead up to the G20 with the largest crowds expected on the Saturday. The magistrate's court will operate around the clock to deal with the potential increase in arrests. But not all protesters are planning on being aggressive. Some groups, like Walking Borders, are taking a more peaceful approach. Well, I think there needs to be alternative ways of how we uh, activate conversation and I think uh, this medium is a successful way of engaging people uh, perhaps more more one-on-one. -on -one. So far relations between protesters and police have remained civil. We've seen I think it's half a dozen protests now and there haven't been any incidents at all and no one's had to take advantage of the additional powers. So they're just there in case something happens. And for locals within the CBD, the increased security measures have been generally well received. I think if something's going to happen, I think we're pretty prepared and we'll deal with it. Well, I suppose it makes us feel safe. And they told us on the train that we had to be careful what we were carrying because there might be police checks. Uh, it's a bit annoying trying to get to uni. It's a little bit intimidating as well, having them everywhere and the security guards everywhere as well it does sort of make you almost feel a bit unsafe at the same time. Months of planning will be put to the test today when the majority of G20 delegates begin arriving. But the security cordon's not just on land, it's on the water as well. Jim Malo's following that story. Jim? The river closed to all but official traffic this morning as part of increasing security around the red zone. The mantra this weekend is business as usual. But from today, no private craft will be allowed on the Brisbane River. Commercial boats are allowed, provided they get the necessary approval. If you're on a city cat, you might catch a glimpse of a member of the largest flotilla in Queensland Police Service history, stationed around the river at all times. So those capabilities will be on the water 24 hours a day between now and Monday. The gradual ramp up of security comes as the first dignitaries arrive. The first official arrivals are the South African President Jacob Zuma and the International Monetary Fund CEO Christine Lagarde. The security presence will continue to grow over the coming days, but the City Council wants to make sure everyone knows Brisbane is open for business. But just as a message for residents, uh, still put your bin out. If it's a bin collection day tomorrow, you can still do that. Those services will be operating. Many businesses are also set to remain open. 
In the Queen Street Mall, souvenir shops are unsure what to expect. I think for everyone there's a fair bit of unknown in the whole thing, but uh, from our perspective all we can do is uh, be ready for trade like we are every day of the year. And although state and local governments are urging people to stay and businesses to remain open, the threat of tightening security and traffic delays are keeping punters away. Some business owners feel Brisbane residents have been misled. The usually bustling Little Stanley Street is a ghost town. But it's very hard. I think the whole city, the way they've advertised it, has scared a lot of people and, and felt that they can't be anywhere. It will certainly be a long weekend for these Brisbane businesses. Jim Malo, QUT News. The journey has begun. Leaders from around the world charting our global economic future. G20 Australia 2014, driving economic growth to create new jobs and new opportunities, making a difference to millions together. To reflect this powerful collaboration comes a piece of art that pays tribute to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander culture. My inspiration came from um, the Torres Strait Islander headdress or the dari. It symbolises fish coming together. I use inspiration from the coconut leaf palm. Weaving is very important to both Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander cultures. Essentially, what that represents is the coming together of nations and also the coming together of leaders. This inspiring symbol represents the tracks of the world's leaders coming together. Plenty more G20 news to come, including some special Aussies on show to the world.